Sorry, that one's on me. Can we lose these heads before the scene? Yeah. Okay, hey guys, sorry. So I spoke to Jay Balvin, and we're gonna lose the backup dancers. Oh, Jay Balvin, oh, Jay Balvin. Oh, Jay Balvin. Oh, Jay Balvin. But spoke to YouTube. They have a very important job for you guys. You're gonna hit this button and start the live stream. Oh my gosh, we are starting the show. We're the hosts. No, <laughs> absolutely not. We gotta go check on all the performers, make sure they're ready. You shouldn't talk to anybody. Else. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. We gotta go. Let's go. You don't. Don't worry, tell Jay Balvin, we got this. The Try Guys are coming. The Try Guys are opening back slides. The concert. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying on JLo's dresses. Yeah, to make sure they're show ready, you know. <laughs> Good thinking! Sound check! One, two, three, four! <laughs> Whoa, a snack platter. Oh, I think this is for Eddie Vedder. Entertainment tonight! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Give me the mic, <laughs> bro! Delivery! Happy birthday, Ben Affleck! Thank you. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so when I open the show, I'm gonna start okay. with something. I'm gonna open the show. No, Ned, I am opening this show. No, it's gonna I, be amazing. I've got the big red buttons. Ned, I've been locked in my house all year. Oh, right. Guys, 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 guys. I'll open the show. Okay, let's just all talk about this. <gasps> I've been looking everywhere for you. We're ready to start the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've been working all on that. The laptop is ready so I can say my line. Oh, no, no, guys, we're all vaccinated. This isn't a video chat, this is, this is real. This is a real concert. Well, I can still wear sweatpants, though, right? Or no pants? Well, you know, Prince Harry's gonna be here. Try guys to the stage, try guys to the stage. We gotta go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're not wearing pants. Hey, oh, hey, hi. hi guys. What are you guys doing here? We are actually hosting the show. Mm -hmm. What? I, wait, I thought I thought Selena Gomez was hosting. Well, we're actually introducing the whole show. I think that makes us. Oh, oh, you guys are being serious right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking yeah, of which, we would love to stay in chat, but we have to get we to the stage. Go. Okay. We gotta go. We gotta go. Good to see you. So Good to see you, Olivia. So nice to meet you. I understand. Yeah, you're you're not you're not hosting. <laughs> I'm a bad boy with big hands. Gotta lemonade with chicken wings. This is Fast Live! And once we get everyone vaccinated, this, this is just the beginning. Count down with us in five, four, three, two, one.
welcome to Vax Live, the concert to reunite the world. Look at all these beautiful people. We're all here in the same room. You know, I didn't even get to spend Christmas with my mom this year. First time in my whole life. We've been away too long. But she's here with me tonight and she's vaccinated. And when I was thinking about what song to sing tonight, I remembered the song she always used to sing to me when I was a baby. So if you would indulge me, I'd love to sing that one tonight. You guys know this one, we can sing this one together. Again. I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. Was in the spring, then spring became the summer. Who'd have believed you'd come?
We've locked down. Geared up. Converted convention centers into hospitals. This used to be our auditorium. This is a fish. Our screens became classrooms, became wedding chapels, became nightclubs. <laughs> We've graduated in our driveways, broken down in our bedrooms, tried to stay sane, tried to be brave, danced it out. And for the first time, when someone asks, how are you guys holding up? We tell the truth. My mental state just kind of went. <laughs> We've lost jobs, lost loved ones, struggled to stay afloat, struggled to cope. It's just heart-wrenching. Nobody taught me how to deal with grief. It's really hard to take. <laughs> We've grieved, breathed, and kept on going. Because we know one day it will be safe to hug again, to go to work again, to go on first dates and get on airplanes and blow out birthday candles. And even when hope feels hard to come by, we know the world is worth waiting for. campaign chair, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Hi, everybody. We are at a defining moment in the global fight against COVID-19. Tonight is a celebration of each of you here, the vaccinated frontline workers in the audience and the millions of frontline heroes around the world. You spent the last year battling courageously and selflessly to protect us all. You've served and sacrificed, put yourselves in harm's way and acted with bravery, knowing the cost. We owe you an incredible debt of gratitude. Thank you. But we're also coming together because this pandemic will not end unless we act collectively with an unprecedented commitment to our shared humanity. The vaccine must be distributed to everyone, everywhere. We cannot rest or truly recover until there is fair distribution to every corner of the world. <laughs> Guys, the mission in front of us is one which we cannot afford to fail at. And that's what tonight is about. The virus does not respect borders, and access to the vaccine cannot be determined by geography. It must be accepted as a basic right for all, and that is our starting point. None of us should be comfortable with thinking that we can be fine when so many others are suffering. In reality, and especially with this pandemic, when any suffer, we all suffer. We must look beyond ourselves with empathy and compassion for those we know and those we don't. We need to lift up all of humanity and make sure that no person or community is left behind. What we do in this moment will stand in history. And tonight, we stand in solidarity with the millions of families across India who are battling a devastating second wave. Namaskar, this is Amitabh Bachchan.
My country, India, is battling with the sudden surge of the second wave of COVID-19. As a global citizen, I appeal to all global citizens to rise up, speak to your governments, your pharmaceutical companies, and ask them to donate, to give, to extend a helping hand to the public that needs it the most. Every effort counts. As Mahatma Gandhi just said, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. Thank you. No, Please welcome your host for the evening, Selena Gomez. Hi, everyone. Are you having a good night? This is Vax Live, the concert to reunite the world. If we didn't know before the pandemic, we know it now. We are all sharing one experience, and we have to rely on each other. And no one has been more reliable than the brave people in our audience tonight. Essential and frontline workers like nurses, paramedics, postal employees, and teachers. Many of us got to stay home. You didn't have a choice and you set an example for all of us. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't underestimate the urgency of this moment and want to get everyone on the planet vaccinated. That's why I've been calling on leaders from governments like Spain and France and companies like Cisco and P&G to donate funds for vaccines. And I'm very happy to report Cisco and P&G each contributing an incredible $5 million to the effort. Thank you. Okay, get ready for some incredible music and some fully vaccinated friends joining us on stage. First up, let's go outside to Kevin Frazier on our own vaccination site right here at the SoFi Stadium. Hi, I'm outside SoFi Stadium at the back site with Trey and Troy. Troy actually drove his son Trey here to get his second shot. Trey, what is the first thing you're going to do once you finish with this second shot? I think the first thing I'm going to do is go to the movies. Oh, I'll buy the popcorn. Let's go together, man. It'll be so much fun. You know, you've come here on a great night because here to personally thank you and all the others being proactive and getting it done is an incredible Grammy and Oscar winning artist. And she's brought along over 200 Los Angeles Unified Fender Play guitar students, many of whom live right around here in this neighborhood. Please welcome her. Fighting for it, everybody wants the power. When we get it, where do we go? Always need a little more glory. Everybody fighting for it, everybody wants the power. When we get it, where do we go? Always need a little more. Following the famous, we do anything to replace them. Take it all. So I'm chasing, working every angle for the spotlight. I just wanna know.
I think it's human nature that when a storm or a crisis hits, we hunker down. Uh, but the reality is, if we all go into our little corner and hope that it blows past, this one's not going to blow past. I remember the feeling that we were getting into uncharted waters. That sense of uncertainty was deeply visceral. I had the opportunity to understand in primera person the fear and also the threat that the COVID-19 poses, Personas muy queridas de mi familia llegaron a estar hospitalizadas. We realize that as human beings, we are all together in this. At this stage, we are all longing to return to normal life. I think we all missed hugging those that we love. The thing that many of us miss is just that connection that we had with the rest of the world. We will end this pandemic only once the entire population has been in the position to receive the vaccine. Unless we band together, we'll never have a fighting chance. Trust science, help each other, and get vaccinated. Look at the future with confidence. Our comeback isn't far. We've continued to step up. We just put $375 million uh, in our most recent budget towards uh, helping people in vulnerable countries get through this. Every person who's vaccinated then becomes a, a, a block, you know, in a chain of transmission. You can become someone who stops other people from becoming unwell. You can protect other people by that one simple act. Cette guerre contre le COVID-19 est une guerre mondiale. Mais c'est une guerre que nous menons ensemble et pas les uns contre les autres. To sum up, I wish that the world understands that its frailty may only be overcome by interdependence and cooperation. Alors vive Vax Live et merci à tous. One of my dreams with my students is that they can use technology for change. Our students always had to deal with the digital divide. But with Verizon support, they have access to the internet and devices and it made the transition to remote schooling during COVID so much easier. Getting vaccinated, getting back to the classroom and just seeing their excitement and how engaged they are about the future. It makes teaching worthwhile. to gather like this again, especially because too often this virus has been used to divide us. Since COVID-19 began, there's been more than 3,800 incidents of violence against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders recorded in the U.S. alone. As an Asian American, these hate crimes have hit really close to home. A virus doesn't have an ethnicity or a region. And when you regionalize, you weaponize. But when we come together, we can do really great things as we have seen with the decades of research that came together to achieve a global solution to the pandemic, a vaccine. Some people have asked, how in the world did we make these vaccines so fast? I'm Oprah Winfrey, and I'm going to unpack the mystery of this remarkable moment in history. This is Dr. Zhang, who in record time mapped the COVID-19 genome sequence and posted it online. This is Dr. Kismikia Corbett, one of a global network of peers who have studied coronaviruses for years upon years. As soon as we got that sequence, I said to myself, it's go time. Coronaviruses have proteins on their surface that are called spikes. 
So if you can trick your body to think that it's infected by just giving your body that spike protein, then you can create immunity to it. Picture a wanted poster for an outlaw named Spike. The minute he walks through the door, everyone knows who he is and kicks that spike down to the floor. I mean, I've heard worse metaphors. While the path to these vaccines feels fast, the archive of research behind them is vast. This is Dr. Terechi and Dr. Sahin, whose decades of work on the immune system was one of the key components that led to one of those aha moments. It felt as an absolute duty to develop a vaccine at light speed. You can call people like us immune system whisperers. This is Jennifer Haller, a mother of two. Moxie, she's got. She rolled up her sleeves to get the very first shot. For me to be able to participate in this trial really gave me a sense of, of doing something, of doing something to help. Global production ramped up to double time because double time was the only time. And the miracle started to move. This is Paolo Mota, who hit the road with a smile and drove mile upon mile. Será a entrega mais importante da minha vida. This is General Gustav Perna, who marshaled the Department of Defense because the logistics requirement was just that intense. This is Jennifer Ramon, who worked day after day with kindness and grace and could see the relief on face after face. And I see the people just break into tears and. It, it just warms my heart. So how did we get here so fast? Because there are no miracles without miracle workers. Because this is a race against time, not against each other. Because this is our shot. This is our race to save the world. Korean Please welcome NCT 127. Fighting for 
아니면 그 기쁨 곳에 눈앞에 펼쳐진 새로운 세상들 손 안에 적기 때문에 안으로 들어와 어둠 끝에 다시는 새로 태어나 Dios creador infunde en nuestros corazones un espíritu nuevo y generoso, un espíritu de justicia que nos movilice para asegurar el acceso universal a la vacuna y la suspensión temporaria de derechos de propiedad intelectual. Un espíritu de comunión que nos permita generar un modelo económico diferente, más inclusivo, junto, sustentable. <tose> من أجل توفير هذا اللقاح ومن أجل عدالة توزيع هذا اللقاح علينا أن نتضامن ونتكاتف من أجل التخلص من الأنانية في احتكار حق إنتاج هذا اللقاح من أجل أن يصل اللقاح للجميع We must continue to rally to defeat COVID-19. We must do this together until everyone has access to a vaccine. I know we are capable when global leadership, faith, and science come together on behalf of humanity. The God I worship is impatient with injustice. 80% of vaccine doses administered globally have been in upper income countries, the poorest countries, under 1%. That is an injustice that we must fix. To all the leaders here with us tonight and around the world, please hear our call. Leave no stone unturned and let's work together like never before to bring about a brighter future for all of us. Being a part of events like this is exactly what I feel in my heart is right to do. Being able to come together as humans is how we're going to get ourselves out of this. It's time to be able to hug again and hold again. That's what humanity is about. <laughs> Please welcome Sean Penn. COVID-19 has reminded us of our obligation to come together as global citizens. Thank you to everyone here tonight for all you do in your communities and for getting vaccinated. And thanks to those who couldn't make it as they continue their tireless work in hospitals, as well as the brilliant scientists who delivered these vaccines. It's been really inspiring to witness the service given by so many.
including people like all of you here tonight who've dedicated your lives to service on the front lines. And a quick shout out to the staff and volunteers of CORE. This night is a first taste of the life we've all been missing. To share it with so many heroes is humbling to stand here with all of you. And now, my great friend and brother in arms, Eddie Vedder. What we've just been through in the last year and a half, but it's something that everyone had to deal with. Now that we have vaccines, it's important to make sure that the vaccines can be distributed to, to everyone who needs it. I've really been grateful that we do seem to be on track with a plan. Get this thing on a trajectory where the whole planet can be healthy again.
Good evening, holy This is a feeling we have not had for quite some time. It feels pretty good. Wow. You know, if you're a government, if you're a world leader, and you have excess vaccine, please don't stockpile. Please make it available for the countries that need it. Please distribute it ASAP. And if you're a drug company, we thank you for your inventions. If you really wanted to be heroes, if you wanted history to look back on and smile upon you as heroes, it would be great if you could distribute this vaccine at cost, and then you'd have a fair and equitable distribution system throughout the planet, and that's how we will survive and conquer this pandemic. We thank you. Have a great night, thank you.
We've had moments where we just have to kind of chuckle at what it means to work at the toilet paper plant during the pandemic. Over the last year, we saw record demand. We never imagined that we'd be providing such a vital service. But we all stepped up. Our teams at more than 100 plants across the country and around the globe. We became essential workers. Now that we have the vaccine, we're really hopeful that we're on the path to normalcy again. Hey everybody, it's Governor Gavin Newsom here, and I'm honored to be joining all of you tonight and for California to be hosting such a fantastic event. Music and the arts have long brought us together to celebrate moments of hope and happiness. And this concert's no exception to that. We know this pandemic isn't over. It's not over until all of our brothers and sisters across the world are safe, healthy, and vaccinated. The light at the end of the tunnel is brighter than ever before. The world will never be the same ever again. This pandemic has truly changed us. I miss the spirit of being at a concert with thousands of people in a stadium. I miss seeing hope again. I want to see hope again. If you're on the fence about getting vaccinated, if you don't think you need it to protect yourself, I'm not gonna lecture you, I'm gonna beg you. Please, please get vaccinated for your family, your neighbors, and every single person you come in contact with. Tonight, we are calling on leaders from around the world, governments, businesses, and philanthropists to donate dollars and doses to parts of the world where the vaccines have not yet been reached. And I would like to say a big thank you to MasterCard, who are also donating an incredible $25 million to this effort. They are also matching donations, and get this, will double the match when it's made with a City MasterCard. We need to get more doses to people around the world who need them. Check out act.me for more details. Okay, are you guys ready for some more music? He is an international superstar with whom I had the honor of collaborating with. Please welcome Jay Balvin. The reason why I'm here, you know, I definitely did this for the love. I had COVID before. It almost killed me. You don't want people to feel what I felt. Right here in the U.S. is like a bubble, you know, it's a blessing that you'll be in this bubble, but out there... Okay, we are rotating the moon. I'm okay. from Colombia, and we just have 2% of people vaccinated. The rest of the South America is just going to the same hell. It's just reality, you know, we need more vaccines around the world. I want people to really know that they have to vaccinate for themselves, for the others, for the world. We're gonna do a demo of our pyro. Okay, here we go. And to see this concert, Vax Life, and see people having fun, closer, together, it gives me a lot of hope. Pensé que me llegara un oponente El que menos pensé fue que a ti te robó el corazón Y es posible que ahora estés con él bailando esta canción Y mi nombre se ha vuelto prohibido en esa habitación En tu cama hay un party Y en ese party no tengo invitación En tu cama hay un party 
En ese país no tengo invitación Y yo no aguanto otra noche sin ti Otra noche sin ti Me duele tanto Otra noche sin ti Otra noche sin ti Last year I experienced my own personal battle with COVID-19 And I can only say it's not something you ever want to get. So the simple answer is to get vaccinated for yourself, for your own, for your loved ones. And to the world, we can all win beat this up. We all this together. Latino game, we all love you, J-Pop and man. You know I can go Gracias. How's the energy tonight? ¿Cómo estamos esta noche, mi gente? Sí, Pablo, man. Gracias por venir a vacunarnos. Sé que esto es sumamente importante para el mundo entero. Yo no puedo esperar a que todo vuelva a la normalidad. <ríe> Ay, yo no puedo esperar a que me la pongan a mí. Estoy loca por volver a los conciertos y poder gritar cuando mi macho esté en tarima. ¡Ricky! ¡Ricky! Ah, deja que se la ponga a mi otro hermano Alex. No siente nada. Estoy lista.
Yo estoy bien feliz que me vas a poner esa cosa. Pues porque, pues, tú sabes, el mundo se está curando y le vamos a meter un puño en la cara al COVID. Pero le tengo miedo. Así que suavecito. Okay. Suave. Ok. Dale. Ay, 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 Ah, eso no dolió. Pues sí, mi marido es el de la camisa amarilla. Y sí le tiene miedo a la aguja. Yo no puedo esperar a que esto ya pase. Estoy loco porque mi familia pueda salir y yo no tenga que estar preocupada con que se contagien. Ah, mira, antes de que me ponga eso, ten cuidado con mi mamá, que es un poquito delicada. Delta's Flight Museum in Atlanta has been turned into one of the largest mass vaccination sites in Georgia. Jaquita Williams went to visit. So tell us what you do here at the VAC site. I am the uh, supervisor here at the Delta Flight Museum and was recently asked to be the site manager for the vaccination sites. Part of what I do is coordinate the volunteers who come in giving up their own time to help Delta, help the community and ultimately the world to get vaccinated so that we can start to return to some of the things that we have been missing out on. Things are opening back up. People are getting together. And while that can be exciting, it can also be scary. Since we have been under threat and in lockdown for over a year, our nervous system has been working overtime, holding us in our stress response. And it can take some time for our system to calm down and feel safe again. Which means that even when things open up, we can still feel scared or anxious. So what can we do? First, we can give our nervous system a chance to release all of that excess stress and anxiety by doing a full body shake. Sounds crazy, but it really works. So stand up, shake out, and I promise you will feel the difference. Second, instead of rushing to jump back into everything right away, do it slowly. Give yourself time to readjust. Get used to being around others and doing the things that you used to love. It's important for our mental health that we connect with loved ones, but it won't help if we feel anxious the entire time that we're with them. Third, when you feel overwhelmed, do some four by four breathing. Breathe in for four seconds, hold it at the top for four seconds, and breathe out for four seconds. And do this, you guessed it, four times. I know breathing exercises aren't always the favorite, but research proves that it calms our nervous system down. So go ahead and give it a try. And if you found this helpful, you can find more mental health tips on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Katie Morton. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining the Global Citizen Concert, especially our frontline workers who have carried us through this pandemic. We're deeply grateful for all that you've done. You know, we know just how difficult the last year has been. We really do. The loss of life, the loss of our way of life, birthdays, graduations, all the milestones we've missed, and the simple pleasures we've had to forego to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. But these moments, meeting your newborn grandchild or holding a loved one's hand through a hard time, gathering with friends, or smiling at a stranger without wearing a mask. When you get vaccinated, you don't have to miss them any longer. Every person vaccinated is helping to save lives and give us back those moments that we've missed so much. You know, we can't let up now. The vaccines are safe. I promise you, they're safe. They work. Everybody in America, 16 years old and older, is now eligible to get vaccinated for free now. And we're working with leaders around the world to share more vaccines and boost production to make sure every country has the vaccines they need. And if we can get this done, we won't have to miss another moment. So go get your vaccine and help all of us get back to the lives and the people we love. We can do this, we really can. So thank you and God bless you. Get vaccinated, it's safe.
please welcome Ben Affleck and Jimmy Kimmel. Hi. Uh, I'm Ben Affleck. We're here tonight to celebrate the return of the shared experiences that uh, we've missed so hold much. Hold on a second, hold on. Excuse me, hello. What? What do you mean, what? You told me we were dressing up. I, I said wear a suit. Yeah, and I wore my suit, and you're not wearing your suit. No. Why do you think I would come here wearing a Batman costume? That, because be you're weird. Batman? Duh. I'm trying it's... to move past that. Maybe you should move along. Oh, really? You're yeah. trying to move I, past I, that? Well, He's trying to move past being Batman. Do you think when people see you sashaying out of a Dunkin' Donuts, they're going to say, oh, hey, there's the guy from Clerks 2? No. <laughs> they're going to say, there's Batman. They're going to say, wow. Batman bought a lot of iced vanilla lattes. I hope Batman can carry them all. Where, where did you even get that costume? I bought it with my stimulus check. You know that. <laughs> That's not what those are for. Don't tell, don't you dare Batman's blame me, Ben Affleck. <laughs> Let's reunite the world, everybody, okay? I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. That this heart of mine embraces all day through. I'll find you in the morning sun. And when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon. And I'll be seeing you. Please welcome Saweetie. Coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. My body. I'm coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. Low commotion, we causing a commotion. I put it in, I put it in, I put it in motion. I put it in, I put it in, I put it in motion. Low. Commotion, we causing a commotion. I see a chick in a whole damn man. I hit the road in an all white man. I keep a first set up on my hands. You don't like me, but you want my. How you look? How you look? How you sound? I'm a boss, my breath, how to handle. I'm a real life mood, a real life news. Cause a pretty pose in my sandals. I can't help, I was born like this. Ain't my fault that she want my drip. Little bit of could have been my friend. Now you gotta watch while I pop my. I'm coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. My body. I'm coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. Like loud commotion, we causing a commotion. I put it in, I put it in, I. One never be number two. Got the candy up a little, take the gas, not zoom. Mad cause I'm rich and I'm young and I'm cute. All eyes on me when I step in the room. Why you stay with my name in your mouth? Let your ass get tight, that's a mouthful. Wanna wear my jewels and set my jewels. Get a couple Cuban links with some big bamboos. I can't help, I was born like this. Ain't my fault that you want my drip. Little could have been my friend. Now you gotta watch while I win. I'm coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. My body. I'm coming in fast, first place you coming in last. I'm in that, in that gas. I'm in that, in that. Low commotion, we causing a commotion. I put it in, I put it in, I put it in motion. I put it in, I put it in, I put it in motion. Low. Commotion, we causing a commotion. My back is aching, my bra too tight. You mad as hell that I shine so bright. My back is aching, my bra too tight. Jiggling, I know that's right. My back is aching, my bra too tight. You mad as hell that I shine so bright. My back is aching, my bra too tight. Jiggling, I know that's right. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Dr. Italo Brown. And I'm Dr. Cedric Rutland. This is Barbershop Medicine. Oh, it's close. <laughs> Let me make a call. This is what I'm talking about. COVID-19 has affected the way that we live in every way possible. See, this is the reason why I tell people they got to wear masks. That's why healthcare providers have been working Yo, it. I just got off the phone. He's down the street. He's outside. Oh, He's sitting outside. Oh, well, come on, man. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. Come on. Oh, man, appreciate it. I'm joining this convo. Yeah. Talking about how COVID is affecting the black community. Yeah, sure black community, you feel me? So. How did it affect you, like, off the rip? It's weird, man. It's like, uh, I lost my grandmother to COVID. Sorry to hear that. Oh, man. Sorry, bro. And it was like, as a, as a man that likes to really fix things. I mean, we men, we like to fix, yeah. build, yeah. match the biology. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't see her. I couldn't help. And I was like, man. So when the vaccine came out, I was like, I want to educate myself because I want to I want to want this. The vaccination, we feel, is necessary. Because if we don't get the vaccination, already knowing that there are healthcare disparities and equity problems, if we don't get the vaccination, it's actually going to widen that gap. Because if less black people get the vaccination, that means more black people are going to get sick. I got like a myth debunker I need y'all to have. Because like, on my way over here, the, uh, the driver was talking about how he was through the swine flu and all these other viruses and his perspective on that. And he says, back in the day, it used to take 10 years of research and study to get that for the people. And so acknowledging that we are better with technology and medicine, sure. is it still that 10 year necessary to have a vaccine such as COVID for people? So my first thought is mm. time to figure this out is never wrong. Mm. But there is urgency. So that 10-year rule is literally what happened before we got to the vaccine now. Mm -hmm. So you had years and years and years of research mm -hmm. that was being conducted on this mRNA technology. Right. And it just so happened that we had the opportunity, unfortunate opportunity, to put it in practice. So the mRNA technology came to fruition in, like, 1990. What Italo was talking about, and it addresses Masego's question, is when you're thinking about research. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about vaccines. To be able to generate or manufacture a vaccine, you have to know what the virus looks like. In other words, you have to know the construction of the virus. You have to know what coronavirus is, right? We know what it is because of the SARS-CoV-1 epidemic in China in 2003. So when you look at it initially, you're like, oh, man, we got this vaccine in a year. That's not true. It's not at all. We knew no. what the spike protein looked like. It looked 90% like it looks like in SARS-CoV-1. So we already had the sequence. I felt like. It happened too fast with yeah. the solution. Yeah. And so you. that's what made me doubt it. So yeah, after y'all's education, I'll, I'll definitely tell it to more people as well because y'all know what y'all talking about. Do you play the drums? I can play that. Do you play the violin? I can play that. What about harmonica? I can play that. Nurses on the front line, we consider ourselves badasses. But with COVID, we don't have the control. Cisco technology has helped us become more efficient. And the day that I got my vaccine was the first day that I felt any kind of hope because we do have a future now. Please welcome back Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Hi guys, before I start, I just want to say every single one of you in here are awesome. So thank you. I understand why people are confused or sometimes don't know what to think or believe about vaccines. We are experiencing a viral pandemic alongside a digital pandemic. In today's world, we are so connected, like a vast nervous system, whether we're online or not. And much like the virus, there are no borders online. So when vaccine misinformation and disinformation spreads, 
magnified on social media and in parts of traditional media, it exposes a collective threat to humanity. I believe that misinformation is a global humanitarian crisis, and the crisis is getting worse. In recent months, we've seen a stark rise in vaccine hesitancy. For the nations that have received so few doses and the countries where cases are rising and the human loss is staggering, hesitancy is not an option. Misinformation is not simply harming those who believe it, but also those who don't. We must tackle each of these issues head on, vaccine equity and misinformation. And if vaccine distribution moved half as quickly as misinformation, just imagine how many lives could be saved. As long as nations struggle with COVID-19, we all struggle with it. One place where this is being felt more than most right now is South Africa. Please welcome Nomzamo Mbata. It is so hard not being emotional, seeing everyone in scrubs. Can I hear a scream, everyone? <laughs> For many, life and a return to the things we love is coming back. But across the African continent, only 1% of people have received a vaccine. In the United States, just last week, 15 million doses were administered. Yet in my home country, South Africa, a nation of almost 60 million people, it was only 10,000 doses. Now many in Africa might not get a vaccine until 2023. That's two years from now, and it is simply unacceptable. The spirit is in us all to rally together and demand that no one wherever they are born, is left behind. This is South Africa's story. Over a year ago, COVID-19 brought the world to a standstill. A year on, the vaccine seems to be the only credible intervention to halt the spread of the virus and bring us back together. But vaccine mistrust, hesitancy, and inequity continues to undermine global efforts. We have the vaccine. We're trying to get it out to everybody. How can we help each other, you know, like dispel and just calm the energy that is, you know, currently in the country? Because um, it's, 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 it's a little shaky. A lot of people have fears, you know, and, and, and they justify in their fears. But I think education um, is, is the first step. So ensuring that people have enough knowledge out there. So we need to have more information being distributed. And in multiple languages, I must say. And in multiple languages, absolutely correct. I reached out to world-renowned virologist, Professor Barry Shub, who was not comfortable with an in-person chat given the times, so we connected virtually. Why should South African public take the vaccine when there's been so many issues around it uh, with the J&J &J vaccine? Why well, South African should take the vaccine uh, is that these are very, very safe vaccines and they're very effective vaccines. So this is a disease that we need to prevent, we need to stop it. And the vaccine is able to do that very safely and very effectively. While the country gears up for the next phase of the vaccine rollout plan, frontline health workers like Nurse Dewoche have received their jabs. We need to be vaccinated if we have any standing chance in actually going back to normality. Right now, it's our best shot and our best hope, and I hope the country sees that and everyone else. The any last message that you want to impart on me and the world, South Africa? <laughs> 
you know, get vaccinated. Okay. You're not just saving your life, but you're saving other people's lives as well. Uh, so getting a vaccination for me has been one of my greatest decisions in the last two years. So, big up. Are you guys having a good night? We still have a couple surprises left, like our next guest, a man who needs no introduction, David Letterman. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dave Letterman. You know me from TikTok. Like a lot of people for the last year, my family and I have been hiding. And while we were hiding, frontline workers became the infantry that made it safe for us to eventually come out. So uh, last weekend, I guess Saturday, I ran into Dr. Fauci at the Kentucky Derby. And I said, what am I gonna do for these people who on a daily basis risk their lives and help hold this thing at bay? And he said, the best thing you can do is get vaccinated. That will make their jobs much easier. When I used to be in show business, I made some friends and uh, these people were the first group on my show after I had open heart surgery. They were also nice enough to come and be guests on my last show, and they were on many, many times in between. I grew to love their music. I grew to love them. Ladies and gentlemen, young, personable, eager to perform, fully vaccinated, Foo Fighters. We've only been performing for our road crew for the last like, six or seven months. The difference between playing by ourselves in a room and playing to a live audience is huge. Music is the one thing that can bring people from all walks of life together. No matter any differences that we might have as human beings, it's usually a song that can bring everyone together and sing in unison, which is amazing. It's really powerful. I don't know too many things that can do it. This one's for you guys.
and gentlemen. We got ourselves a rock concert right now, is what we got. Been a while, right? Hold on a second. Who missed going to rock and concerts? Who missed rock concerts? Joe, do you miss live music a little bit, right? A little bit. Me too. So considering that this is the first show that we've done in, I don't know, a year and a half, long time, we thought that we would make this a special occasion for all of us. Right? So say you want to do something special, what do you do? You call a friend to come play with you, right? That's usually what you do. Why not call one of your good friends who happens to be a rock legend to come jam with you, right? That's, what, that's just what you do. So allow me to introduce you to one of our good friends who's gonna come up and do a song with us. Ladies and gentlemen, from ACDC, Brian Johnson is here with us right now. Doing pretty good there, Daddy. Lovely to see you all. Wonderful. This is on.
York City is bouncing back thanks to health workers at vaccination sites like City Field. Gail King went to check it out. I am bound down literally. 200,000 people have been vaccinated so far at this yeah. site. It makes you feel that the message is getting out there. This is rolling our sleeves up and doing what needs to be done in this moment. Come get your vaccine! But so many countries still don't have the vaccine. That's why City, Global Citizens Global Partner, is supporting Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, to help ensure there is equitable distribution of the vaccine globally. Getting the COVID vaccine to communities across the African continent is a huge challenge. Project Last Mile is supporting the vaccine distribution by drawing on Coca-Cola's expertise and networks. We know that equitable access to the vaccine is critical. Now more than ever, Africa needs all of us to have a sense of community. And we all want our futures back. Throughout this terrible pandemic, we have seen so much loss. Loss of life, loss of jobs, loss of normalcy. If we have gained anything, it is a reminder of the responsibility we have as a global community to see one another, to support one another, and to protect one another. Today, we have a vaccine, and thanks to the ingenuity of scientists, the hard work of manufacturers, the dedication of healthcare professionals, people around the world are getting vaccinated and in so doing, saving lives. If you are already vaccinated, thank you for stepping up. If you're not, please, when it's your turn, make the time, roll up your sleeves and get your shot. We can do this. We must do this. It is our responsibility as global citizens. Thank you and enjoy the concert. From Ireland, please welcome Picture This. Some of us will drift apart while others stay together. And some will step in from the rain while others face the weather. And some will take the last breath while others breathe in life. And though they're standing on a nest, you still the will to fight. And just cause things are different don't mean anything has changed. I know the world's on fire, but there's beauty in the flame. And we don't know how much longer, but we know we're gonna come back stronger. Ourselves while others rediscover the love is in the innocence of baby to his mother. And some will grasp it in the hands while others lose control. Yeah, we gotta leave our fingerprints so that the future knows. Different don't mean anything has changed. And though the world's on fire, there's a beauty in the flame. And we don't know how much longer, but we know we're gonna come back stronger. Oh, just cause things are different don't mean anything, anything has changed. I'll be the light. If you follow me, I will be everything. I'll be the leader If you want it, I promise it. 
past year has been defined by communities coming together tirelessly and heroically to tackle COVID-19. And we've gathered tonight because the road ahead is getting brighter, but it's going to take every one of us to find our way forward. As campaign chairs of Vax Live, my husband and I believe it's critical that our recovery prioritizes the health, safety, and success of everyone, and particularly women who have been disproportionately affected by this pandemic. With the surge in gender-based violence, the increased responsibility of unpaid care work, and new obstacles that have reversed so much progress for women in the workplace, we're at an inflection point for gender equity. Women, and especially women of color, have seen a generation of economic gain wiped out. Since the pandemic began, nearly five and a half million women have lost work in the U.S., and 47 million more women around the world are expected to slip into extreme poverty. But if we work together to bring vaccines to every country and continent, insist that vaccines are equitably distributed and fairly priced, and ensure that governments around the world are donating their additional vaccines to countries in need, then we can begin to fully rebuild. Not only to restore us to where we were before, but to go further and rapidly advance the conditions, opportunity, and mobility for women everywhere. My husband and I are thrilled to soon be welcoming a daughter. It's a feeling of joy we share with millions of other families around the world. When we think of her, we think of all the young women and girls around the globe who must be given the ability and support to lead us forward. Their future leadership depends on the decisions we make and the actions we take now to set them up and to set all of us up for a successful, equitable, and compassionate tomorrow. Now, tonight, we've had a reminder of the things we miss the most, be it live music and sporting events, or just physical contact with family and friends where we can sit together, laugh together, and hug one another. Whatever it is, it all circles back to the same thing, connecting as a community. For most of us, this means our local community, our loved ones, our neighborhood. But let's also think about our global community. Across the world, we've struggled together. Now we deserve to heal together. We want to make sure that as we recover, we recover stronger, that as we rebuild, we rebuild together. Thank you. I absolutely miss the big village that is the world. We're humans. We naturally need each other. The vaccine's important to show that you care about others. I really want people to stop any idea of individualism. Just think of everybody else. What an incredible night. Our goal was to call on leaders to pledge dollars and doses to make vaccines available everywhere. And I want to let you know that because of the support we received for the Vax Live campaign from businesses, philanthropists, and Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, more than 10 million doses will be purchased for those in need. Thank you guys so much. And many governments have heard this call and will share millions of vaccines with frontline health workers in the poorest nations. But we need more governments, including all of the G7, to step up and commit to sharing now. Okay, a little while ago, I found out that of the nearly 27 million people in the healthcare workforce in the developing world, three quarters are women. There are mothers, caregivers, daughters, and sisters. They have stepped up in this moment in history and every other moment to see us through. So if you haven't already get vaccinated, then give that woman and your life a hug when you see her next. She's our dick. And in the spirit of togetherness and yes, sisterhood, I want to bring out a friend, a good friend who is bold, brave, and hilarious. Truth teller herself, Chrissy Tagan. Thank you so much, Selena. I listen to you and I love you more than you will ever know. Thank you for hosting such an incredible and impactful night. You know, it was only six months ago that this vaccine was first administered to a healthcare worker an immigrant woman from Jamaica named Sandra Lindsay. The doctor who gave her this shot, a black woman, Dr. Michelle Chester. The symbolism wasn't lost on a single woman of color. We have seen the most, the most death, illness, and hardship. And we will lead us out of this mess 
because this is more than a stadium full of people. It's a house of hope. This is what women do. We build villages everywhere because we've got parents to hug, kids to love, friends to see, and big problems to solve. So let's get this vaccine everywhere, please. And to play us out and keep us strong, please welcome back the iconic, the incomparable, Jennifer Lopez. We are at the Global Citizens Concert, reuniting the world. It's very busy backstage right now. Um, and everybody just kind of coming back together for the first time. <laughs> Vaccinations really making that possible. Everybody in the audience is vaccinated, all frontline workers. So that's what we're doing. That's why we're here. You know, tonight we're raising money to get vaccines. The United States is doing great. We're, we're getting there, but there's a lot of underserved countries around the world and we're trying to get vaccines to everybody and uh, make sure that the whole world can get back to uh, being together, to reuniting. But tonight we unite in song. This is our historic moment. The unity is the path forward. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights once and for all. Well, it's easier to be a parent this morning to tell your kids character matters. Women are being particularly adversely affected. This is no simple reform. It really is a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. I'm too good for that. I'm too good for that. Just remember that.